Okay, so today, let on you read on the description of my talk. Just forget about it. We're talking about Beyonce now, so forget about everything. Now, joking. Um, well, the reason why I put Beyonce is because lately she was involved in a very interesting lawsuit. It's uh, about accessibility for, in this case, web accessibility for visual impaired user. What does it mean that her website? user that have like blind or problem with vision cannot see anything. This is a big deal and why so why why someone why, why would be web accessibility considered in as an important things in lawsuit like why would they have lawsuit at all about web accessibility? Actually if you know that according to World, Tra World Health Organization, in the world we have a, about almost 20% of the population that have some sort of visual impairment. It can be different level of low vision. For example, you with glasses, also called visual impaired. Um, something like you cannot see color blind, like different color blindness, or of course, user with blindness. Everything that can cause your visual decrease, that's considered visual uh, impairments. And 20% is not, it's, it's not a lot, but it's not small to ignore. And these people have trouble, it's not like trouble, have challenges when they have to access a web, um, like website or e-commerce apps. And a lot of, of countries understanding this, so they actually legalize the need that for a web for a website to provide accessibility. In US particularly, they saw that the amount of lawsuits regarding web accessibility have been increased significantly during the last few years. And just like from last year in 2018, it actually tripled the, the number from 814 cases to 2,200, more than 2,200 cases in US only. In Europe, I believe it's also going the same trend. And e-commerce is the target. Like e-commerce actually got hit the hardest. Why so? Target, anyone know Target? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, target is one of the biggest uh, retailer in US and they have to pay 10 million US dollar just for not being able, not paying enough attention to web accessibility. This lawsuit is huge, um, and it's, it will happen to anyone. It can happen to you, it happen to any company nowadays, because not a lot of people understand how important accessibility is to user. So what can we do about it? Well, what solution do we have? That's why I'm here. <laughs> we, that's what I'm gonna talk about. We're going to talk about accessibility um, with in view, and actually we will be, very specific on media accessibility. So before we start, mm, a little bit about me myself. I'm Maya, and um, I'm a senior front end of Cloudinary, and I'm also a founder of uh, VHS Israel, a meetup group. Um, you can find me on Medium, on GitHub, on Twitter. Follow my um, what is that username? Uh, Every, every, everywhere the same, so I don't bother to put it on the link. <laughs> um, okay, so our talk today, first we will say what is media accessibility? A little bit overview, what is accessibility? What exactly is A11Y? And what are the current, current cha challenges that we have in order to en enable accessibility to users? What and how do we solve it? And finally, are there any way we're going to de develop a policies to actually in our development process to help to make sure that we provide enough accessibility for user? First, what is accessibility? It's actually what users see in your website or here also. And from what from that, what can user understand about uh, your website, like how to use it? And then they will use 
accordingly. It can be uh, nowadays it's almost the same with use, usability because if user cannot l understand what they see or what they hear, they cannot use it. So accessibility and view usability is almost the same. And what in media accessibility is actually how you combine the colors, different color combinations that can be problematic for different kind of user. How you combine between background images and text which is used a lot, like a band, big banner with some text in it, and how you're going to provide help, like provide a visual alternative to users that cannot see, for example, or have problem to, to see certain area of the screen. What, what are there to support them? So that's why we have that's, there's some challenges in order to um, we have some challenges in order to solve this thing. I mean, some challenges in the way that we are trying to solve the trying to uh, enable accessibility. So what are these? The first one is photophobia. It's not the problem with taking photos or selfies. <laughs> Actually, it stands for life sensitivity, which we. As developer face it a lot because this problem up appear for people who deal with computers of device and for a long time it will reduce it will make you not be able to focus to see things in the very light background and any one of you still using like um, editor like light team editor and visual code for example hmm? that's good <laughs> I, I I actually don't. I um, when I go stop, when I use the back door. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, when I'm using the um, when I change to black black team, I never go to the other way around. <laughs> 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 um, the next the next problems the next challenge is contract sensitivity. Um, the contract sensitivity is, is about text on live, like white text on live background, which it makes it harder for users to see it, or black text and dark background. This is very common for, uh, for developers uh, because some of the time it, it varies from person to person. Uh, so some of the time you cannot really see that a little bit of um, contract, a little bit lack of contractness will cause a big problem in uh, viewability for user. Um, by the way, this is a very bad example. Can you really see any of the text, small te text on, on the screen there, or like on the picture? They have some small text, like software, something. This is the website was for a university and the offer for course. And it's hard for er anyone to actually see the text written on the, on the image because it's the contract is not good enough. So yeah, it, it's, it's very bad case of usability. The next thing, it's not really, the next thing, there's nothing wrong with this photo. But some user will see this. This is um, a color blindness, and this color blindness is called deuteranopia, <laughs> and it means that user cannot differentiate between blue, uh, green and red, and it makes it little, it's really hard for them to differentiate between whether which one is red, which one is, uh, which one is green. In they can guess this is two different colors based on, based on the texture, but overall they cannot see. They cannot see the difference. The next thing, this photo is great, but for another thing, for another group of user, they will see like this. This group have a problem, have a challenge of seeing the difference between blue, between yellow and purple, and blue and green. That's why they cannot really see the color, the different, uh, the, even though the picture looks so nice for most of us. Not and not for them. It's just it does. It's not that nice because they cannot really see 
how many spices you have in this in this photo. And let's have a small game. Can anyone tell me how many colors they have in this one? And what color is it? <laughs> anyone? Okay, actually, the answer is all of them are different. But this is people with uh, achromatopsia, they cannot see any color. All they see is gray, black, like black and white, gray scale. So if you have an e-commerce website and you have a photo like, each of photo like this, they will not know which color they should choose in order to buy. And that bad. And this. Can anyone see anything? Are you sure? <laughs> this is what blind users are seeing on your website. They cannot see. So they cannot see anything on your website, no matter how gray it is, how colorful it is, they cannot see anything. So that's a challenge. So how do we, the developer can solve it? Well, let's, let's find out. But first, I wanted to show you a video about something amazing that I found out about, uh, in Microsoft. Oi, we don't have any sound here. No, never mind. It make it less fun. <laughs> what? Okay. So yeah, wait. <laughs> so this is, this is a, a very it's amazing app for uh, supporting for blind user. And one more, imp the reason I put it here because it was developed by a blind developer. That's that's awesome because it's the person who wrote this app is actually blind. It's, so I have to put it here for, to show you how, how they developed the solution for a blind user for Microsoft. But it's, we don't really need it. It's this one including AI. But for front-end developer, we don't need to wait for AI to actually help us on this. We can, we can do other things to help um, our own the visual impaired user to be able to access our website better without any help. So how we do it? That's why we go on to next time, a solution. For, for the blindness uh, sensitivity, we have uh, actually most of the company, uh, big company already trying to solve it. And for example, Apple, Twitter, Facebook, if you're using the, the app, they already provide you the dark mode. And we also can provide, that's why I'm saying that we, we can actually in, enable for use on our web app the dark mode by using CSS, filter. Anyone use filter before? So what filter we do is if we use invert, it will actually invert all of the website from the current um, color to exact opposite color, like this. But it doesn't really show like this. 
it actually invert on the color, which means it's also invert on the uh, picture, on the image to the exact opposite color. Um, we can easily get the dark mode by filter, but we need to solve the problem with the image because we want the image to be, to, to be the same. So one solution is that we can apply, um, how say, double invert on the image itself. So how do we do that? Let's see. Why? That's why we have the demo. And why is my, why is it so big? Yeah. So this is the normal thing. Oh, no, this is the dark mode. And I'm enabled dark mode in our Vue.js application. And I'm just save. And you saw here when I'm, oh, right, I forgot. And I need to switch on this. So you're using, uh, I'm using CSS variable. Uh, we have a variable called night mode. And uh, this way we can, uh, we can provide a uh, uh, dark mode by, uh, by, uh, by dynamically. Say so it should work. Now you can see everything, what? <laughs> Okay, it's just a matter of the, um, I need to apply it to another one layer, of, of, I think. Oh, then, so, you got the idea. <laughs> so anyway, so this is the dark mode and it will apply to the, to whatever, from whatever, um, let's say here I apply from the body onwards. So on whatever content in inside the body will be changed to dark mode. And, but the pic, the photo is not there, it's not good enough. So if I'm changing, I do, a um, invert one more time for the uh, for the photo. We get the photo uh, as we want it to be. But if in case I already have another photo, let's say grayscale, it will not work. Why? Because the gray but the field, this filter will override the other filter by CSS loss. So how do we solve it? And that's why I'm going to use Cloudinary. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so here, instead of doing like this, instead of doing filter, all I need to do is I will apply here a transformation, as I said before. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, forgot. Now it works. Why it always goes here? So all I need to do is I'm using um, transformation that actually invert the color of the photo uh, on real time using the URL. From the cl from Cloudinary and will return to me the photo already inverted the colors. Um, as you can see, the, the photo I received from the server is already inverted. So this way you, we can provide the dark mode with uh, without using a lot of CSS and without checking if the CSS work on this or is override by anything else. And that's one solution. How about? Contrast sensitivity. For contrast sensitivity, the easiest way is that we will have um, a little bit of background and at the banner, which is the image with some opacity to make it a little bit blurry. And of course, we have the title with the color, super strong color, a little bit of shadow if we want. And then it will appear like this. Or if we want to apply it dynamically, which in case that we want to change the color, which we want to change the opacity later, we can use also a CSS, CSS module, where we apply for banner brightness and also using filter with brightness. And in this way, we actually can tell the banner, I want the, I want the brightness to add the, uh, to add the filter of brightness to this image a 60% or 50% on CSS. And then the code will be reduced by a lot from this much to this much. 
And from here, we don't even need the we don't even need the margin and all the stop uh, position because wait, wait. And we only need certain something like this. It reduces a lot of work for CSS uh, code. But can we do it better? Well, let's see. So in here, I have. So I'm, I'm still another one if I'm using Cloudinary, and I put it here. I'm gonna take this one away. And of course, I do need the CSS styling. So it's in here. Mm. And the title, of course. Where's my title? Here we go. I didn't make a mistake. Oh, right. I forgot. And it all I did is just put an effect the same with brightness minus fifty percent, which is is just reduce the whole image I received with the pr less brightness. Pr so now I get the pr the perfect contracts between the between the image and the text. Of course, you can choose whatever you want. You can choose CSS or you can choose um, using Cloudinary image. Up to you. Um, but it it's not that hard to uh, to enable constructivity. And if you even want, you can create um, a small plugin that allow user to to select how many how much brightness do they want for the app and using CSS module. And this way, user will have on the on the right, like on the control over the app for accessibility. And how about color apply? Unfortunately, in order to make user understand uh, or help user know what color it is, it's impossible. But we can do by create help having users see the texture. We can have adding texture. To the to the image to help user differentiate between which color and which color, but this one we don't have any CSS solution or code solution. This requires a little bit of Photoshop, uh, so we need to ask designer to create an, a different image just for this case. But it's you know uh, it's require a lot of work and also it's costly because you need we need to keep an additional image just for color apply. So what should we do? Again, as I say, we can also use Cloudinary. I'm sorry for mentioning Cloudinary a lot. <laughs> but this is something I really like, and I need to show you. For example, this is the one. And I have transformation again. And I have this here. Oh, right. No. As you can see, the, the photo uh, already have the strap, the texture added. So this way, you can actually uh, create a mode for user for color blind. And then when user enable it, we can already show the user the photo with strap, with texture, so they will know 
this is a different color. It's really useful for char, because if you use, use char and you have the problem with color red and green, they will not be able to differ between these two. So, yep, that's the solution. How about act, um, the grayscale problem? Uh, the thing is, we don't have any solution for this because they cannot see color, so any texture is, will not help also. And if you have only one for one, one, um, one color in, the, uh, in your image, texture will not help. That's why we need to have another thing. We need to have title description. For example, in this one, we need to have a title that is really, ex like, how to say, exact, accurate. Like, what is supposed to describe? You cannot put it like um, in this, just a shirt. You need to put, okay, this is the super dry, dry, ori original pocket t-shirt. Anything that make user that cannot understand uh, color will understand or cannot see the color, the, the, the picture can understand what it is. And also, you need to put also color, like that, that color. And then have to put description. The more description you have, the better for user to understand what it is. Because image, just the image doesn't help. But so that's how it, that's what, that's the only solution right now we have for for you know, certain of user. By the way, remember about Beyonce. So the reason why Beyonce was sue over web accessibility is because she provides in her website. Can anyone understand what it? 1.31.19 means? It's actually, I think it's the upload day. It's the upload day, and if screen reader read this, they will not be able to understand it. I mean, user will not be able to understand what 1.31.19 1, uh, 1 means for this image. So yeah, that's why sh she got into the lawsuit, and we shouldn't do that. Okay, so to wrap it up, we will have a little bit extra guidelines for accessibility. The first one, and also the most important uh, for any developer to know is area. What is area? So the, the browsers, uh, the relationship is like this. We have the browser, and we will wrap it with area, and using the accessibility um, assistant uh, technology, to make user with visual impair being able to understand the browser, the browser whatever they see, through through the technology. But in order to do that, you need to communicate. So in order to communicate well for the like screen reader, um, because screen reader need to be the middle connection between your website to the user. So in order to do that, we need to create, we need to provide roles for button, for input, for any div, for anything that on your on your site that doesn't have an, a role. And also provide state. Let's say input, you need to have state check or uncheck, or is pre or button press or not press, because someone rely on this. And properties, for example, a div, a button, you need to have label. If you have an icon, it's not enough. You need to provide label. What, what is this button supposed to do? Because for user, normal user will see, okay, there's an icon, a button with icon. But for blind people, they will not understand what did this button do because they only have icon. So need to put a very specific label for the button, such as, in, for example, in this case, you can have area disabled, which she makes with telling the user that this button is not disabled. So the user know that he can enable or disable this button. But the best example is that you don't do this. If it's a button, it's supposed to use the natural tag of button. Screen reader probably will understand this is a button by row, but it's not a good practice. Why? Because in one day when CSS disable, then what do you see? <laughs> like in this. Uh, so this is before CSS is disabled, look identical. And this is after you CSS disable. You may argue with me that CSS dis disable is not possible, 
but in some certain case, some problem with uh, your CSS file, or some problem with the internet connection, that's, it's slow. And all you see is this. <laughs> and how will user understand which one's supposed to click, which one's supposed to be a link, which one is the headline? It's if you have a page, the structure have to be in order and have to be organized and have to be almost identical with the one that with, with the one with CSS. And do you know the difference between these two? This in the right side that you use in span at the headline, and this in the right and in in the left side like this, in the right side like that. So in the in the right side. The headline is the heading, because it's supposed to be heading. By the way, if your website have a um, heading too, you will fail the accessibility test, because it's supposed to have an order, which means if your page is in heading two, you should have heading one. Because it's according to level of uh, seeing, seeing, like level of accessibility. So don't try to play around like using H1, but put in some kind of CSS styling, like saying that it's H2 instead. It's just not the way it should be. If it's the he heading, like the top headings, use H1. If it's something like small or something like sub subheading, then use H2, H3, H4. And the next tip is text and texture. Like I say, you need to use a lot of texture to show user. It's a good practice to use to show user the different uh, in colors or a lot of description. If not, without the description, user that with grayscale will not be able to see what the error, why, whether there's an error because they cannot see red. But sometimes we don't have a lot of uh, a lot of space for texture. In this case, we need to use icon. So we need to make icon. In, if you can use icon, use it. But need to use it wisely, which is you cannot use the icon like this. You need to use the icon according to what it was meant to be. The use icon is very universe, uh, universal. And for example, IT support, if you, you look at the Wi-Fi icon, any, can anyone understand this is supposed to be IT support? And it, it's, if you already see it, use the icon, it shouldn't use together, I mean, it should be sufficient enough without the description. So use it wisely, use it correctly, and then it will tell you a lot, and will tell you a lot of, a lot of things behind it. The next tip, also the last tip, a color combination. As you can see, different colors not supposed, to, there's certain pair of color not supposed to be together. Red and green, green and brown. So don't try to use it. Don't try to use it together. If you have to use it together, remember to use icon, to use description, because if not, no one will understand. I mean, user with visual impair will not be able to see it. To be, to, uh, will be able to differentiate understanding it. So keep in mind, when you use it, keep in mind that there's certain pair of colors not supposed to be next to each other. OK, sorry. <laughs> last and last but not least, tools. What are the tools that can help our development process to comply with accessibility? Can you ace, which I highly recommend it, because it really tell you what, what went wrong and what uh, also give you some suggestion. But I don't really like the, 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 how to say, the UI of the ace. It's too high level for me. <laughs> Another very good um, just release project from Microsoft is Accessibility Insights, which you should definitely check out. Um, they actually can work in uh, different platform also, uh, and it's m the UI is much nicer. Lifehouse, anyone that developed in Chrome will probably already know Lifehouse. In Lifehouse, we have also audit for accessibility, so you definitely should check it out before deploy. But I would say anyone that using, like we we'll say, develop not only on Chrome, but also on Firefox, on Edge or IE, you should definitely check out WebHint. 
which is a tool that can be used in any, uh, in also in your web, in your own application, and will tell you hint what what should what can when what can go wrong for accessibility. And if you really want to simulate how it looks, then No Coffee Simulator is the Chrome extension that should should definitely check out. It allows you, for example, in this website, it allows you to, to simulate the website in different uh, color deficiency. Let's say I want it to look like a chromatopsia, or I want it to be like the torama, <coughs> like this. Let's say if I want to have, the no, sorry this one and then I want to see how user with contracts problem you can see here that the uh, thing change or you can want you want to see where because there's certain user with visual block in the certain area of the screen and then it will also tell you which area that user may have problem and it's why it doesn't mean middle <laughs> And then you can try play with it and see whether your app looks okay in this uh, situation or not. And another thing, this one only on Mac. So I'm sorry if you use another thing, but this is a great project that you have them. It actually the application will really simulate the color of the image to the you know, color blind user, and it's accurate. So before we finish. I would like I would like to you to do to start doing some um, to take some actions. First, you need to be proactive. You need to be more uh, how to say try think keep in mind that we do it for other user, not for major majority, but we aim it for everyone to to be able to access our website. So try to be try to um, think think accessible way. Like try to put a little bit of area, learn about it. I know it's hard. I, I do because I still cannot figure out everything, but it's a good start. And it's also good for SEO and screen uh, screen reader. It's screen reader rely on on area solely. So if you don't provide it, screen reader will not be able to uh, to read out loud whatever you meant it to be. It will be able to to move a bit from using tab, but it will not be able to describe what exactly you meant for user to, to know about this certain area. And of course, on tag and description is a must. And of course, pay attention to color combination. And before you deploy to production, make sure you have to go through um, simulation or testing with Lighthouse, accessibility, any tool that you like for accessibility. Um, and a little bit about certain projects we have. We have um, we have currently have several pro several projects for media accessibility. So if you would like to participate, well, you're welcome to join us. And also, uh, me and team will uh, join in view storefront UI to make it m to make sure that accessibility is enabled for view storefront. So yeah. Um, that's great for view storefront to take the initiative. And that's it.